not intellectually disabled enough. That's what the Georgia Supreme Court justices said could not excuse a man on death row from his sentence. Rodney Young was in special education classes in grade school and later scored between a 60 and a 69 on his IQ test, which was shared during his initial murder trial. But because an expert did not testify as much, jurors refused to find him intellectually disabled, and the courts now say that can't be undone. Under Georgia law, individuals sentenced to death are required to prove their intellectual disability beyond a reasonable doubt before they can be exempt from the death penalty. The standard is so high, no defendant has ever met that burden of proof, and we are the only state in the nation to have such a threshold. In 2021, Rodney Young's case was heard by the state's high court, and while they upheld the rejection of his intellectual disability, some justices implored those in power to remedy the law as quickly as possible. First, we must start with how Rodney Young ended up on death row in the first place. In 2008, when he was 39 years old, Rodney Young was arrested for the brutal murder of his former girlfriend's son, Gary Jones, in Covington, Georgia. It was a brutal attack. Young bound the victim to a chair before stabbing him in the neck and hitting him repeatedly with a hammer and a lamp. Young was indicted in June of the same year on one count of malice murder, two counts of felony murder, one count of aggravated assault, and one count of burglary. And in 2008, the state announced its intention to seek the death penalty. Four years after the crime was committed, the case was taken to trial. At that time, the jury declined to find him mentally retarded. That's an antiquated term used 13 years ago, but it's since been revised under Georgia law to reflect mental health profession's term of intellectually disabled. According to court documents, Young presented evidence in the guilt-innocent phase in support of a possible finding of, quote, mental retardation a word we don't use anymore, but for the consistency of court documents, they utilize the same term. But by the jury, including testimony from staff members at his former high school, stating that he had been in special education, had been classified as mentally retarded, and therefore must have been tested with an IQ of between 60 and 69, and had struggled intellectually in academics and in sports. However, Young did not present any expert testimony regarding his alleged intellectual disabilities and any actual IQ test results. The state also presented testimony from an expert who, though he never met Young and had not performed any tests on him or had a real opinion about him, was able to testify about the subject of intellectual disability in general. On February 17, 2012, after a week-long trial and two hours of deliberations, the jury found Young guilty on all charges, though Capitol Defender Joseph Ramon asked jurors to spare Young, reminding them of how he was as a child. Do we punish Rodney by sending him to the cold, dark prison cell, or do we have to kill him, put a needle in his arm and drain his life? Killing Rodney will not bring Gary back. When Rodney stepped out into the real world, there was no one there to tell him what to do. Everything started to spiral out of control. The pressure got to be too much. Something terrible happened. What happened to Gary Jones was inexcusable and awful, but we know there's always more than what we know. District Attorney Layla Zahn was adamant Young needed to be put to death. She said, quote, The human mind is not meant to comprehend this kind of evil. Why do we have a death penalty? For the worst of the worst, and this is the worst of the worst. It was savage. So four days later, Gerard's recommended a death sentence. Those fateful words were read by the Superior Court Judge Samuel Osborne. I hereby sentence you to death by lethal injection, Mr. Young. May God have mercy on your soul. Attorneys for Young asked the court for a new trial on numerous occasions between March 2012 and September 2017, but not just on the basis of the court and jury ignoring the intellectual disability. The first request outraged the district attorneys as lawyers for Young said the prosecutor paid witnesses and didn't disclose it. DA Layla Zahn said in court that three witnesses were flown in from New Jersey and were only reimbursed for the wages they lost while waiting in a Covington motel until the time to testify in the trial. She argued they didn't make any money, they were just compensated. A later request for a new trial was sought on the basis of Young wearing a 50,000 watt stun gun belt during the trial. All of the requests for new trials were denied. In 2019, attorneys for Young appealed the decision again and after a number of procedural acts by attorneys, the case was heard by the Supreme Court of Georgia in March 2021. 
That brings us to eight years on death row, where Young's defense team isn't arguing he should be released from prison, merely that he should not be executed. During arguments made before the Georgia Supreme Court, defense attorneys argued Young should not be put to death because of his disability. He's currently represented by the American Civil Liberties Union, best known as the ACLU, and the Georgia Capitol Defender Office. The state, along with the support of the Georgia Attorney General's Office, obviously still disagrees. But the decision by the courts wasn't one that came easily. In fact, they delivered a 144-page ruling. 144 pages! Then, Chief Justice Harold Melton wrote, quote, after reviewing the record, we conclude that the evidence presented in the guilt-innocence phase was sufficient to authorize a rational trier of fact to find beyond a reasonable doubt that Young was guilty of all of the charges of which he was convicted, and to find, considering the conflicting testimony on the subject, that Young had failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he was, quote, mentally retarded. The trial court properly refused Young's attempt to plead guilty but mentally retarded to his murder charge in exchange for a life sentence because the state objected to such a plea. Young argues that requiring him to prove his intellectual disability beyond a reasonable doubt in order to be exempted from a death sentence was unconstitutional. Seeing no clear direction in the law to hold otherwise, we adhere to our prior decisions upholding Georgia's standard of proof. While Georgia was the first state to ban the execution of intellectually disabled persons, it has, from the initial ad adoption of that ban, imposed a burden to prove intellectual disability on defendants under a beyond a reasonable doubt standard. This standard of proof has been challenged several times in the court on constitutional grounds, particularly in light of the fact that some other states impose only a clear and convincing evidence standard on defendants seeking to prove their intellectual disability, and the majority of states that still have the death penalty impose only a preponderance of evidence standard on defendants. We affirmed our prior holding that claims of intellectual disability are more closely analogous to claims of insanity, which the Supreme Court has held could be subjected to a beyond a reasonable doubt standard, than they were to claims of incompetence to stand trial, which the Supreme Court has held could not be subjected to a standard higher than a preponderance of the evidence. Thus, in light of the specific statement by the Supreme Court that it had not established any particular procedural standards that must be applied to mental retardation, the similarity of mental retardation claims to claims of insanity at the time of the commission of crimes, and the persuasive effect of having sister states who have refused to declare the preponderance of the evidence standard to be constitutionally required, we held that Georgia's beyond a reasonable doubt standard was not unconstitutional from a procedural point of view. And finally, the Supreme Court rejected Young's arguments that he is entitled to a new trial based on several alleged discovery violations by the state, that the jury was not diverse enough, that the trial court did not violate his Sixth Amendment rights by having him wear a stun belt during the trial, and that Young's failure to object to a number of contentions at trial left the Supreme Court with no purview to consider the objections now. In his opinion, Presiding Justice David Nemias wrote, Young and his advocates are also welcome to try to persuade the people of Georgia through their elected representatives to revisit Georgia Code 17-7-131C3 in light of the extensive developments in the science of intellectual disability and the law in this area since the statute was enacted more than three decades ago. If the General Assembly takes a further humane step with regard to criminal defendants who are potentially intellectually disabled, I would embrace that change. Justice Charles Bethel, however, penned a powerful dissenting opinion in which he referenced the 2014 decision by the U.S. Supreme Court. Quote, We have learned that the states are not authorized to enforce legislative rules or judicial tests that by design or operation create an unacceptable risk that persons with intellectual disability will be executed. The question before us then is whether Georgia's requirement that a defendant prove his or her own intellectual disability beyond a reasonable doubt creates an unacceptable risk that, that an intellectually disabled person will be executed. Here the existence of such a risk seems plain. Wow. Defense attorneys were understandably disheartened by the ruling by the state's high court. Brian Stoll, senior staff attorney for the ACLU Capital Punishment Project, issued this statement. This decision is devastating for our client, Mr. Young, his family, and the community, the intellectual disability movement, and the legal team who has worked with our client. The Georgia Supreme Court continued an error today that has plagued Georgia capital prosecution since 2002 when the U.S. Supreme Court announced that people with intellectual disability 
could no longer be executed. Georgia is the only state in the nation that requires defendants to prove this disability beyond a reasonable doubt in order to spare their life, as required by the Atkins decision and the Eighth Amendment. Georgia's uniquely high and onerous burden means that people with intellectual disability will be executed, just as Warren Hill was executed in 2015, despite every expert who interviewed him affirming his intellectual disability. As four of the Georgia justices recognized, the decision violates the reasoning of recent U.S. Supreme Court decisions forbidding states from upholding procedures that create unacceptable risks of executing persons with intellectual disability. But there's more. The lawmaker who helped craft the high standard for intellectual disabilities has said it was made too quickly and without consideration of a mistake. He said, I dropped the ball. He said he and his co-author had not meant to impose a reasonable doubt standard, but that they put a key clause in the wrong place. That's what he told the Georgia House of Representatives in 2013. It was sloppy draftsmanship, pure and simple. I don't think anyone intended that to happen. Today, Gary Young is 54 years old. He remains on death row, and his attorneys have lobbied for the U.S. Supreme Court to review the case to correct injustices once and for all. In January 2022, we learned that the nation's high court would soon decide if the case is worthy of consideration. So is it? Should SCOTUS review the case? More importantly, should they overturn it? Or should we not worry with someone's intellectual disabilities and allow Young to be put to death anyway? I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments.